Hello and good morning, my everyday watercolor journal idea followers. Thank you so much for being here once again. I'm Shana Searcy and I'm so excited to paint with you. So this morning we are going to be doing a practical lesson in our journals, some practice in color mixing. Now color mixing can be super daunting for a lot of people. They don't want to learn it. They're very resistant to it. They would just prefer to purchase all of their colors um, straight out of the tube or out of the pan. And that's fine. And that's totally okay. I have lots of convenience colors. You can tell I don't have just three primary colors in this palette. Um, and there are a lot of colors out there that have unique qualities to them because of the pigments or minerals that are used and you're not going to be able to get that through mixing certain colors but i would like to say that color mixing is an invaluable skill to have even if you don't plan to mix a lot of your colors although i think you should um, but even if you don't plan to mix a lot of your colors because watercolors are transparent it is inevitable. You will always have times when you are going to have colors next to each other or layered over top of each other, whether that's through glazing techniques or washes that mix together. And if you don't know the basics of what's going to happen when those colors interact, um, then you are going to get frustrated later on. So knowing that you can't put, for example, and we'll get to this, you can't do easily do a wash of a purple and a yellow in a sky together and blend them together without getting brown or getting muddy colors. If you don't know those basics, you'll get frustrated. So when you know the basics of color theory and color mixing, it can help you in many different ways other than just making the actual colors to use on your page. Although I think that is wonderful as well. Um, so I'm going to go over really, really simple ideas in color mixing that um, hopefully will help you and also maybe something you didn't know already. So let's go over the simple basics, the primary colors. Primary colors that you learned in maybe elementary school were red, yellow, blue. That is still true to an extent, but red, yellow, and blue there are different qualities of red, yellow, and blue. And that's what I want to point out to you today because a lot of people don't realize that. So we have, I'm going to go over a warm red and a cool red. And what that means, we'll start with red. So here is a cadmium red. This is your traditional like fire engine red that you would, if someone said to you, go pick out red, this is probably what you would pick. Okay. And then we have a cool red. Let me pick up and I have an alizarin crimson here. This is a cooler version of red. This has more blue undertones to it. And as they dry, you'll be able to see the difference. Sorry for the glare in the light on there a little bit. You'll be able to see the slight differences. And then we have a magenta, which often is used in place of red in a color mixing palette. Not always, but we'll get to why that's important. So there are three different versions of red. They all have different qualities. This one is very warm, meaning it has lots of yellow undertones to it. This one is um, a cool red, and this is a magenta. So this has more blue undertones to it, and this is a true magenta, which is much more bordering on the cool side with lots of blue tones to it. All right, so as those dry, we'll be able to see them without that shiny glare, but give them a moment. Same thing is true with yellows and blues. So let's go over yellows. I have a warm yellow. This is a diarolide yellow, um, gamboge yellow. Uh, you'll see in lots of other brands, but obviously it has a very warm reddish tone to it. And then I also have a cooler yellow. This is this is a cadmium yellow, but Hansa yellow light you'll also see very uh, similar to this. In core, I find their cadmium yellow to be very um, cool and has some green undertones to it. So look how different those are. You can see that difference right away. This is going to make a huge difference when mixing colors like greens and oranges. And then we have our blues. So there's a plethora of blues out there. I'm just going to pick out, uh, I'll do three for this as well. I could do a third yellow, but I don't think it's super necessary. I don't want to overwhelm you. All right. So this is an ultramarine blue. This is a very warm blue. It has red tones to it. 
okay? And then we have a very cool blue, which has lots of green tones to it. This is almost like a turquoisey color, okay? And again, as those dry, hopefully I'll zoom in a little bit and you can see the difference between those. And it becomes even more apparent on camera kind of as they dry. Um, and then I'll do another, I have a cerulean blue here. This one is a little bit more neutral, but has a, a gray tone to it. And this, you will be able to see a difference in color mixing. So here are all different versions of primary colors and they affect the outcome significantly when you're mixing colors. Um, all right, so let's do a little mixing of these. And I was gonna do a color wheel, but I got a little carried away with my swatches. We might have to do a second page today for color mixing. But let's just do our secondary colors down here. Actually, you know what, I'm gonna dry this and we're gonna go to another page and we're gonna start using these in two different color wheels. We're gonna do uh, mix up the colors so you can see the difference of what happens. All right, here we are on a nice clean page. I'm gonna build you a warm color palette first. And this is what people traditionally will pick up if they have little to no experience with color theory or color mixing. And they just kind of go based off of their primary school knowledge. They'll pick up a red. So this is a warm cadmium red. They'll pick up a blue and often it will be a cobalt or an ultramarine blue or a warm blue. And they'll pick up a yellow. And the yellow really varies. I'm gonna stick with a warm yellow on this one. So um, yellow, when picking up a traditional like color palette, you might pick up um, any version of yellow and yellows are tricky. There's some really neon yellows out there that can really make things wacky. Um, but anyway, here's a warm color palette. So I chose all the warm versions of the colors. So now when I mix red and yellow together, so this is a very warm yellow and a very warm red. So this red has lots of yellow undertones. This yellow has lots of red undertones. So they're already um, close to each other in nature. So when I mix them together and I put a little too much red in there, I'm going to get a beautiful, vibrant, very bright orange. So this very vibrant kind of carrot orange color. What you would expect when mixing your colors. And my wheel is very blocky here. I'm so sorry. All right. So now, when you mix this yellow in this blue, this blue has a lot of red undertones, so it's kind of moving in this direction towards the red. And this yellow has a lot of red undertones as well, so it's also kind of moving in that direction. They're not really moving towards each other. So this is where we get some unexpected um, results. So sometimes folks will pick up these colors and try to mix a green, and they won't get the green that they're expecting. They'll be underwhelmed by their green. So we're gonna take some of that warm blue and some of that warm yellow and mix them together. And look what we get here. We get this like grayish green. And no matter how much you mix of each of those colors together, it's never gonna be a vibrant, beautiful green. It's almost like a gray. You can have a much bluer gray or you can have a much yellower kind of gray color. And it, this is going to be your green. And people are like, oh my gosh, what am I doing wrong? I don't understand. I just want a beautiful green. Well, we're going to get to that and why. Um, and then my red and my blue, same thing. This red is kind of moving towards the yellow. It's got yellow undertones. This blue, however, is already moving towards the red. It's got red undertones. So it's kind of like, I want to hang out at the party with you. And this red is like, oh, no, thank you. So... Again, you're going to get some unexpected results. Um, it's not going to be a vibrant purple. So purple, green, and orange are secondary colors. Sorry, I did not go over that. Um, 
you're going to get another dull kind of grayish purpley color and it's not going to be what you were expecting and you're again you're going to be it's almost like black here I could probably add a little more red to that um and you're going to be like, ugh, I don't know what I'm doing wrong. I really just wanted this beautiful, vibrant purple. Not that these colors aren't important and aren't part of our color spectrum and you won't use them. You definitely can use this green and this purple in lots of places as well as these other colors. But again, it's all about really understanding what you're going to get and how to get it and being able to create the colors that you actually want versus being frustrated and not getting the colors that you actually want. So let's do another color wheel where we are mixing our cool, all of our cool colors together, our cool versions of these colors. So we're gonna do a cool blue, a cool yellow, and a cool red. So that would be, from my color palette, that's gonna be a phthalo blue. It's going to be a cadmium yellow and it's going to be an alizarin crimson. I won't get into the magenta yet, but putting a magenta in your palette for color mixing can be really helpful. Um, and I'll go over like what I, if I had only six colors, what they would be. All right, so let's start with that red again. So we have an alizarin crimson, which is a little bit of a cooler red, it has more blue undertones to it. We're gonna pop in this beautiful Phthalo blue, which is like this gorgeous jewel tone, turquoisey blue color. And I'm gonna put in my cadmium yellow. Got a little contaminated there, sorry. This beautiful cadmium yellow. So this is a cool color palette of primary colors. Um, and you can see, you can see the difference um, of these colors. If we go back to the original page, which we will in a moment, them side by side, the cool red versus the warm red, the cool yellow versus the warm yellow, the cool blue versus the warm blue. All right, so let's start mixing these and see what we get. Uh, so red and yellow, so this is cool red, it's trying to go in this direction towards blue, it's got blue undertones, and this yellow also has blue undertones. So they're moving away from each other. They don't necessarily want to mix um, in the way that we would expect them to. So let's mix some alizarin crimson and some of our cadmium yellow. So this still produces a pretty good orange. Orange is a, is a great forgiving color, but it's going to have a little bit more of a subdued color, a little bit more of a brownish um, desaturated color, but it's still pretty beautiful orange, but you can see it's a little duller. This one has a little more pop and this one, um, and I made it a little on the red side. Let's add a little more yellow to that. But this one is a little more subdued. All right, so blue and yellow. So this cool blue and this cool yellow, they're already moving towards each other. They're both cool colors. So they want to hang out together at the party. So what is gonna happen? What's gonna happen is you're gonna get that more expected green color, that really bright green that is definitely not um, watered down, or I'm sorry, desaturated or brown. Look at this, this is almost a gray green. Um, you can't even tell it's green. It's like gray with green undertones, but this is a beautiful, bright, bright, bright green. And then our red and our yellow, again, this green is kind of moving away from the red a little bit, and this red is moving towards the blue, so they're kind of moving in the same direction um, with their tone. Uh, so let's see what we get when we mix them together. So we're gonna do this green and this red. Oh, I need a little more red there. All right, so still a pretty subdued purple, but more purple than gray for sure. Let's add a little more red to brighten that up a little bit and add a little water. So again, not the beautiful, beautiful, brilliant purple that we want, but more purple than this, okay? All right, so what, 
what does one do to make a beautiful, brilliant purple? What does one do to make um, a green that's somewhere between this and this? Because um, these are all great colors, but they might not be the exact colors that you want. So let's talk about the color wheel a little bit first. One, primary colors. That's your red, your yellow, and your blue. Secondary colors, purple, orange, and green. So let's label these P, P, and P for primary, secondary, purple, orange, and green. Now, let's talk about who lives across from each other and who lives next to each other. So I've been talking about cool and warm a lot. So the color wheel can always be divided into two halves. Whoops, I put my half in the wrong spot. Um, you have your warm half and your cool half. So your cool colors are purple, uh, blue, and green overall. And your warm colors are red, yellow, and orange. So your these are your warm colors and these are your cool colors. So when I say something is a warm tone or a cool tone, it means it has, if it's a warm tone, it has some undertones of red, yellows, and oranges. If it's a cool tone, it has some undertones of blue, um, greens, or yellow, or purples. Now, who lives across from each other? These are really important and make the biggest difference in color mixing. So orange and blue live across from each other, red and green and yellow and purple. These are what we call complementary colors. They complement each other. When they're next to each other, they are very bright and vibrant. They make each other the best, their best selves when they're painted near or next to each other. But when they start to mix, they start to desaturate each other. So they start to become um, less vibrant version of themselves. So for example, hopefully you're staying with me here. If you have, we'll use our purple. So if you have a blue and a red and either of these colors have yellow undertones to them, your purple is going to be desaturated because that yellow is pulling it away from its brightest best self, okay? So even though you're not mixing yellow, if either of these colors have yellow qualities, which this blue has a lot of yellow undertones to it, it's moving towards this, this way, um, then, or the green and yellow, you are going to have a desaturated purple. Okay, so that's really important when you're trying to make desaturated colors. If you need this green to be more like this or more earth toned, you're just going to add a little bit of red to it and it's going to make that green a beautiful earth tone. Um, if you need your orange to be more of a brown color, you are going to add a little bit of that blue, just a tiny smidge, and it's going to start to inch it towards the center. Okay. Hopefully that wasn't too much information, but let's get to how to mix your best colors. So you don't always have to stick with mixing warm colors and mixing cool colors from the primaries together. You can mix and match them as well. That's why I recommend having at least one warm and one cool primary color of each in your palette. So if I had to choose, Let's say if I had to choose and I wasn't allowed to pick magenta because I'm always going to add magenta, I would pick um, one of each of these in my palette. I would have a cool and a warm blue, a cool and a warm, or I'm sorry, cool and a warm yellow and a cool and a warm, um, a cool and a warm red. So if you had to, had to choose just three colors, I would pick at least, um, most likely I would pick a cool blue, a cool red, and a warm yellow. I think this combination will get you the furthest. Okay, so this is alizarin crimson, uh, diralide yellow, and this is phthalo blue. Um, but that doesn't mean you couldn't uh, pick other combinations. Now, I'm always going to add a magenta to my palette, and I would even replace um, probably probably my warmest red because of what I paint, but I would replace one of my reds if I had to choose. I would add a magenta, but if I can have all three, I will definitely have all three. So I'm not even going to worry about this blue over here, the cerulean. I just showed it as a third example, but 
if I only had to have these colors in my color palette, these seven colors, I definitely would. I would add a, a Payne's gray and a sap green, but that's for another story for another day. But if these were the only three and I can get black out of this, that's important to know. All right, so let's mix some other colors. Wow, I'm just gonna eat up my sketchbook today. Let's mix a few other colors with this color palette or with these different colors. Let's mix black also. So here I have a bunch of secondary colors. I have purple, yellow, and green in here, which that means I have all my colors because this purple has some red and blue in it. This orange has some orange and, or yellow and red in it. And this green has some blue and yellow in it. So all you have to do to get black is mix all the colors together. Now it's not always in an equal ratio, but I already have this purple here and this is already pretty close to black, but it's far too um, red, right? So this has too much red tone to it. So let's use our color wheel. If this has too much red in it, what is across the color palette that's gonna bring it towards, you know, black is in your center. What's gonna bring it towards black? Green. So let's pick up some green and see what happens. Look at that. Like as I add green to it, I get this lovely, lovely, much grayer shade. And this is still a little kind of purpley red to me. Let's pick up some yellow and add it. That's warmed it up. Now I have a warm gray. The only difference between black and gray really is the color saturation. So you're just going to need more paint and pigment to get to black. So let's add some more pigment directly from my palette. There we go. So I get a much darker color. There's my black or my deep gray. And we will add that right here. So look at that beautiful black. And then if you like your black or your gray to have a warmer quality or a cooler quality, what do you do? You just add a little bit of the warmer colors or the cooler colors um, to it to swing it to the towards that side of the color palette. Okay, so there's my black. I have black. I've mixed all my colors. Now let's have some fun mixing uh, with the other colors. Let's mix up the warm and cool color palettes because that's where I find I get my favorite colors. So I am going to choose, we'll go back to this page. Let me stick, since that is still a little wet, I'm just gonna stick in a scrap piece of paper that I don't care about. Okay. So my favorite green comes from mixing a cool green and a warm yellow. And that is gonna get you closer to a sap green that I prefer. So my warm yellow, my diorolide yellow, and my phthalo blue kind of get me towards my favorite version of green. And if this green is too, you can also add a touch of red to it. Look at that beautiful green. So it's not quite a gray green. It's not quite a beautiful, vibrant jewel green. It actually probably looks a little dark to you on camera. So let's add a little water to it so you can kind of see the tones in there. And then you can go more yellow to get a more yellow green. But still, I love this color because it's more of a natural earth tone green to me without being gray. You can still see the beautiful green qualities to it. And that's because we're using a cool and a warm color. So they're desaturating a little bit so we don't get this vibrant, vibrant um, like Kelly green and we're getting more of an earth toned green. So it's taking a little of the saturation out of that vibrancy. Um, so this is my favorite color combination, especially to make greens. Uh, to make a beautiful bright purple, again, we're gonna go with a cool blue and a cool red this time. Now this, to make a really, really awesome purple, you would add magenta with the cool um, blue, but we'll stick with the red. Let's make two purples. Actually, we did that over here. Yes, no, no, yes. 
we did our cool red and our cool blue and we got this closer to purple. So let me show you how to do with magenta. Magenta really makes the best purples. Um, <laughs> so my cool red and my cool, so my magenta and my cool blue is really going to make you that powerful closer to dioxazine purple color that royal and let me just add some water to it so you can really see the pigment so there's that beautiful beautiful purple oranges orange i'm super happy with mixing this warm um, these two warm tones and the and even the cool and the warm yellow and the cool and the cool and the cool yellow the cool red and the cool yellow oh my gosh i'm just whoo um orange is very forgiving um with this color palette but if you want to desaturate your orange a little bit, oh, my paper towel is so dirty. I feel like I'm not even picking up color anymore. Okay, um, you can definitely do that. So let's say, let's look back at our color wheel. Orange is opposite blue. Let's stick with, let's make our orange using, sorry, my yellow is a little. We'll use our warm yellow. And our cool red, I'll use my Lizarin Crimson. It still makes a beautiful, beautiful orange. And let's say I want it to be a little more on the brown side. Brown is easily made. It's just a desaturated orange. We're going to use the warm blue here. So now I have a brown. Beautiful warm brown. And if I wanted to bring it back closer to yellow, I would just add more yellow. Closer to red, I would add more red. If I wanted to warm it up. And now I have a different color brown, a much redder, warmer brown. And then if I wanted it to be gray, I could go ahead and add a cool blue. Because that cool blue has green in it. And that's kind of mixing all the colors. So look at all those varying shades. Now I have a bunch of videos on how to break down all of these things. We do just greens, just purples, just yellows. We do all neutral colors, but it really helps with your understanding of color palettes and knowing the complements and that they do desaturate each other because that's what creates muddy paintings often is when those colors get a little too friendly with each other. Um, amongst other things and overworking and things like that. But knowing that purple and yellow, if they start to mix, can get a little funky. Knowing that red and green, if they start to get too mixed together, they'll get really desaturated. And the same thing with our blues and our oranges. So hopefully this was helpful and not too confusing. So you have your color wheels, warm and cool, and then go ahead and mix the warm and cool versions of them together. So when you're starting to make colors, you might have to stop and think for a minute. I want to make purple and I want to make a very vibrant purple. Look for that magenta and um, your cool blue because it's on the cool side of the color wheel. If you mix it with the warm blue, it's going to be a little desaturated because it's bringing in those warm colors. Um, if you want to make a more uh, desaturated, slightly desaturated green, again, you're going to look for the warm and the cool together versus the warm and the warm or the cool and the cool. The cool and the cool are going to get you that super vibrant green and the two warm uh, colors are going to get you that very uh, gray green. But if you want something in between that, these beautiful hues, mix the two together, the warm and the cool shades. So hopefully that was helpful and not too confusing. I know this went a little longer than some others, but I love color mixing. I think it can be so valuable and it's a great thing to practice in your journal. So if you're just not sure and you're getting ready to paint, maybe use one page for some color mixing for the colors you're hoping to use in your practice or your painting and then go and make 
your painting on the other page in your journal. So that is my best tip. Practice a little bit every day. Take the colors that you already have, mix them together in varying amounts and see what you get. So some of it is just play, playing your way through the color mixing practice. All right. I hope this was helpful. I'm Shana Searcy. Don't forget to check out the description of this video. Go find my other color mixing videos if you want more details on various, and I will try to link them in the description as well. Don't forget to find me on social media, like, follow, subscribe, and share this with a friend who you think this would be helpful for. Thanks again, everyone. Happy painting, y'all.